Now, guys, let us uh, shift to the position uh, of the heart uh, valves. So we have to know a little bit about the um, uh, surface anatomy of the heart and the especially the heart uh, valves. So you know we have AV valves and we have semilunar valves. Now I would like you guys to um, keep in your mind these two numbers number four and number three right keep these uh, two numbers four and three four keep it the number four keep it for heavy uh, valves and number three uh, keep it for semilunar valves okay so I'm trying to um, find an easy way to um, memorize the uh, position of the heart valves listen we're looking for the position of the heart valve not the where the location of listening now the position and at me the position of the heart valves so guys also keep in mind that just the tricuspid valve um on the right otherwise you know the other three will be related to the left right so this is another trick so let us start with the tricuspid valve and mitral valve just to draw like oblique line like this and parallel to this line another line like this so also remember number four and remember number three so we have two lines three and four okay let us start with the tricuspid valve so we mentioned when you say tricuspid valve try to remember and mitral valve try to remember number four so memorize them in this way tricuspid then mitral aortic then pulmonary valve so remember yes number four for um um av valve excellent so one time use the intercostal space and the uh, other time use the costal cartilage so one time you will use um this space and sometime we will use the costal cartilage so erase everything and again so the um a try the tricuspid valve is located on the right side but where on the right half of the sternum this is the sternum so and this is the half of the sternum i was saying like this so it's located behind the right half of the um uh, sternum opposite to the of course number four for what intercostal space so opposite to the inter for intercostal space behind the right half of the sternum now shift to the mitral valve okay something also related to number four but this time it's located behind the medial end of the uh, behind the medial end of the fourth lift lift costal cartilage this cartilage behind this cartilage so now you understand what i mean by four and four one time intercostal and one time left costal so tricusp mitral now let us shift to aortic and pulmonary remember number three and one time okay this is aortic i'll use another pin okay uh, sorry okay so uh i'll raise this these things now aortic valve located behind the lift medial behind the lift half of the sternum opposite to 
the third intercostal space. This is the third intercostal space. Right? Now, compared to pulmonary valve that's higher, uh, a little bit higher than uh, the uh, aortic, also it's located behind the medial end of the third lift now costal cartilage right here so guys tricuspid valve and mitral valve aortic and pulmonary tricuspid valve behind the right behind behind the uh, right half of the sternum at the level of fourth intercostal space the mitral valve now on the right behind the medial end of the fourth left costal cartilage now intercostal space then costal cartilage here also in the aortic intercostal space but the third and the pulmonary aortic behind the costal cartilage so one time intercostal the next time costal cartilage intercostal costal cartilage so this is an easier way to memorize it uh, to memorize the uh, uh, position of the heart valve and also remember that the um, semilunar valves are higher in position than the AV valves look at it this is the uh, right atrium I would say and this will be the valve tricuspid valve and this is the left atrium and this is the mitral valve that puts the blood to the left ventricle and to the right ventricle okay on the right side I mean so and if you look also to the shadow um, of the pulmonary trunk this is the pulmonary trunk here okay so this is the pulmonary um, valve and this is the aortic valve here and this is the ascending and arch of aorta so tricuspid valve mitral valve four four one one time intercostal space and one time costal cartilage and always in this um sequence tricuspid and mitral and aortic and pulmonary so where to listen for heart sound we yeah we have an idea about the position of the um, of the valves but always keep in mind to put the stethoscope um downstream from the um the flow of blood what does it mean okay for example this is the position of the tricuspid valve when you want to hear the sound of the valve now put the stethoscope downstream from the flow of blood like you know that the blood comes from the right atrium through a tricuspid valve to the right ventricle so this is the downstream the direction of downstream of the blood put it here why here not not over the sternum or ribs or cross cartilage now the important point guys that it's highly recommended to listen over the intercostal spaces whereas there is no barrier inter use the intercostal spaces right don't put the stethoscope over pawns so always remember that put this the stethoscope over the intercostal space so let us uh, start with the uh, tr you know the um, tricuspid valve and mitral valve the AV valve okay this is the tricuspid valve and this is the mitral valve so the, the downstream of the blood um, will be at you know or the better uh, the better uh, location for listening for the tricuspid valve and mitral valve will be the fifth 
intercostal space. Makes sense, right? So remember now uh, number five because we mentioned that they are located at the level of four. So the location of again back the location of tricuspid and mit mitral um, valve were at the fourth, either fourth intercostal space or um, left fourth costal cartilage. Now plus one will be the um, location where to hear their their uh, 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 sounds. So in this case, in this case, we can hear the sound of tricuspid valve at the, and mitral valve at the fifth intercostal space, but the tricuspid valve. Uh, will be here just um, uh, to the um, left of the lower part of a sternum. This is the sternum and this is the lower part and this just lateral to it in the uh, fifth intercostal space. While the mitral valve will be um, the best location to hear the sound of mitral valve will be at the apex of the heart. And you know the apex of the heart located at the Fifth intercostal space at mid clavicular line. Okay, so now let us shift to the semilunar uh, valves, including the aortic valve and pulmonary valve. Okay, you know the blood will be pumped up, not down like AV valve. So in semilunar valve, you know, in the right ventricle, the blood will be pushed up, right, through the pulmonary valve and up through the uh, aortic valve, right? This is aortic valve from left ventricle to the aorta. Okay, so we have to move up now. We mentioned in the previous slide that the location of aortic valve and the location of pulmonary valve was something related to number three, here, uh, either three intercostal space or third costal cartilage. Anyway, so plus one, uh, sorry, minus one, because you will go up, right? The blood will be pumped up. So you will hear uh, the sound of the aortic uh, valve um, over the medial end. This is the uh, medial um, end of the right second intercostal space. Three minus one, that means two. Two. Two intercostal, the second intercostal space. This is the second intercostal space. So for the aortic, go to the right, very close to the uh, medial end of it, right? This is, the me this is the medial end of the intercostal space. And this is the medial end of intercostal space on the left side. So here is to hear the, uh, the best location to hear the pulmonary valve. And this is the best location on the right side to hear the aortic valve. Guys, uh, still we have to um, talk about the great uh, service anatomy of the great vessels. Although we mentioned many of these um, uh, uh, information related to the uh, uh, service anatomy of those uh, vessels uh, previously, but let me focus on a couple of things. Um, here is the, uh, you can see the superior vena cava. This is the shadow of the superior vena cava, and you know that's formed by the union of left brachiocephalic uh, vein with the right one behind the um, right costal um uh the first uh, right costal cartilage and the superior vena cava once formed it descends a little bit and uh, it pierces the right atrium of the heart at the level of third costal right third costal cartilage because this is the first this is the second and i would say almost this is the third rib and there's the third costal uh, cartilage. So the um, subia vena cava pierces the right atrium at the level of third, right third costal cartilage. On the other hand, if you talk about the inferior vena cava that passes through the cava, the caval opening, 
uh, of the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm. There are three openings in the diaphragm. One of them uh, is the uh, an uh, caval opening, which is for the um, uh, inferior uh, vena cava. So then the inferior vena cava ascends, um, uh, as I mentioned, from the abdomen, passes through the diaphragm, and pierces the uh, right atrium of the heart behind the right um, sixth costal cartilage, right? So the superior vena cava uh, pierces the um, heart at the level of the uh, right third costal cartilage, but the inferior at the left of sixth, um, right of course, right of course, right, <laughs> right sixth costal cartilage. So, what we have here also root of great vessels and great vessels here, we have the ascending aorta. This part of the aorta is the ascending aorta. Do you remember this terminal angle, which is very important landmark here? So, the before this terminal angle, just keep it in your mind. The ascending aorta origin starts um, from the uh, aortic or aortic orifice. This is the say the heart and this is the aortic orifice at the base of left ventricle then it ascends as you see it ascends superiorly and a little bit to the front and a little bit to the right right because this is the uh, right and now at the sternal angle it becomes like or it continues as arch of aorta then again at the sternal angle, the arch of aorta becomes thoracic aorta. Also, I would like to, uh, yeah, one thing that, um, although it's early to mention that, but uh, you have to know that the this ascending aorta has two brands, the right coronary artery and left coronary artery. Um, we have the pulmonary trunk. This is the pulmonary trunk. There is an easy way to remember the origin of pulmonary trunk. Do you remember the where the superior vena cava uh, pierces the right atrium? It was at the right third costal cartilage. But the pulmonary um, uh, trunk originates from the right ventricle at the also third costal cartilage, but on the uh, I would say, say to the uh, left third costal cartilage. The superior vena cava pierces the right atrium at the right third costal cartilage because this is the sternum, say, this is the sternum, okay? But the uh, pulmonary uh, trunk originates at the level of left um, third costal cartilage, and it's here, it's written here, so it ascends, guys, up. As you see, and uh, a little um, uh, bit uh, uh, to the um, uh, uh, left, and it divides into um, left and right um, pulmonary arteries at the level of sternal angle again. Let me go back to the previous slide and show you here you see this is the uh, sternal angle so at the level of sternal angle the ascending aorta becomes arch and also the pulmonary trunk divides into right and left this is the pulmonary trunk so uh, just erase these uh, things okay what else we have so the origin of pulmonary trunk, the division of the pulmonary um, trunk as well, the sternal angle, or you can say the lower border of T4, because you know that the sternal angle, sternal angle located at the uh, level, if you go, if you draw horizontal line from sternal angle anteriorly, you will reach the level of intervertebral disc between T4 and T five, right? Okay. So now, guys, the um, 
the branch, the right pulmonary artery, this branch, as you see, uh, it passes behind the ascending uh, aorta and behind the superior vena cava to uh, until it reaches the root of the right lung. On the other hand, the left pulmonary artery um, positioned in the front of descending, this is the descending aorta, and um, it... Um, uh, enter the uh, it enters the uh, root um, of the of course left lung. I think um, in this lecture we mentioned about the uh, fetal life and just briefly that's because we concerned about the um, fossa ovalis in the uh, interatrial septum. However, when the uh, blood uh, in the um, uh, heart of the fetus, you know, the oxygenated blood will come to the inferior vena cava and ascend to the right atrium. Then from our right atrium, there is um, a fossa or valley that bypassed, I mean shifted, bypassed the blood to the left atrium. Then from left atrium, left ventricle, then from left ventricle to the aorta. Okay, but sometime there is a blood leaked from the right atrium here to the right ventricle. Then from right ventricle will be bumped. We know that the lungs are non-functional in the fetus. So, but anyway, um, uh, some of the blood can lead to the right atrium bump to the pulmonary trunk, but the lungs are non-functional. So what will happen that this now it's a ligament, but before it was um, uh, uh, an artery, it was an a uh, patent vessel, yani um, uh, uh, vessel miftuh, right? In which what's the function of it? The function of it is just to shift the blood that reached to the right atrium and pumped from the to the pulmonary trunk to the shifted back to the aorta. It's oxygenated anyway, so and the lungs are non-functional. So if the blood lead to the right atrium and bump to the pulmonary trunk will be shifted through the ductus arteriosus. This ligament was a patent vessel known as ductus arteriosus to shift the blood from pulmonary trunk to the um, uh, arch of aorta. Then after uh, birth to regret and it becomes uh, like uh, ligament as you see here now um, this is just for you guys if you are interested or or so this is an um, x-ray um, taken just to show you the right uh, the cardiac contour uh, in which look to the right and left border of the heart or right um, heart contour and left heart contour in which the right heart contour represents mainly the uh, uh, indicate for the right it indicates for the right atrium and the left one indicates mainly to the left ventricle now if you want to see if the patient has uh, an enlargement in the heart uh, you will order a posterior anterior x-ray Posterior anterior, it's something related to the, um, you will take it later after maybe two years or so, the direction of the beams. So, there's somebody, draw somebody on here, and I'm not a good guy. But the beams should be from the back, because your heart in the front, and this is the plate that will receive the x-ray. So... It's preferred because the heart is close to this um, uh, plate, so you will not. So it will give the actual size of the heart. So that's why you have to ask for posterior anterior um, X-ray in order to assess if uh, there is enlargement in the heart or not. Anyway, then the once you have it, in order to assess if the heart is enlarged or not. It will be the size of it will be in relation to the total width of the um, 
uh, thorax. So this is known as cardiothoracic ratio. The width of the heart should be less than half of the uh, thoracic width. For example, if this um, width would be, say, 32, the width of the heart should be less than half of it. That means it should be less than 16, right? So in this case, it's 15. That's great. Okay, so if they uh, CTR more than the half, for example, if it's, um, say, if the CTR is 20, that means it's abnormal. There is enlargement in the heart. And it's abnormal. So, the, um, the uh, width of the heart should be less than the width of the uh, thorax. Here's just an x-ray. I'll also show you guys the um, uh, aortic uh, knuckle which is on here. Let me draw, uh, I will try to draw this um, for you. This is the trachea. I will follow the um, trachea here, the shadow of the trachea is put together. Um, and here is the right bronchus and left bronchus. So, uh, and this is the, be the arch of uh, um, the aorta and again descending aorta here so it's the same x-ray but with colors and um, uh, uh, labels indicating the structures and this is also as well thank you for listening and uh, hope you find value in it